How's it going everybody? It's Razine here for Astrophotography and today I'm starting a new series I'm calling The Night Sky where each month I handpick some targets which I think are of interest across a multitude of focal lengths star clusters, galaxies, nebulae, you name it breaking down what the moon's doing, any planets in the sky and anything else of interest that month so this could be just to give you some ideas what you might want to look at in the month of January. I'm going to start off with deep sky objects because that's what I'm most familiar with. And these measurements I've been taken using my ASIO 71MC Pro as a reference. So that's a 1.5 crop factor sensor. So whatever camera you've got may vary your field of view a bit. However, let's begin. About 300 to 500 millimeters of focal length, I'm going to point you over to the east to Perseus, the California Nebula NGC 1499. Now this is a really large emission based nebula, ideal for narrowband filters or those filters like the L Enhance or the L Extreme. It starts off high enough in the sky at 6pm when it begins to get dark and is available all night until about 3am, 4am and then it drips down below 20 degrees altitude. Now a lot of people don't like to shoot below 20 degrees altitude because of atmospheric disturbances. Again, still at 300 to 500 millimeters focal length, you can then swing over to Andromeda Galaxy. This is still available. It's quite late into the Andromeda season though, so it's only really available till about midnight. It drops below 20 degrees altitude, about 130. So if you want to shoot the Andromeda Galaxy, you're going to want to probably get straight on that early on in the night when it gets dark and shoot it all the way through until it drops below too low for you. If you're about 500 millimeters, then you want to swing over to Auriga, where you can capture the Spider, the Flight, and the Tadpole Nebula, three beautiful deep sky objects in one field of view. These are IC417, NGC1931, and IC410 respectively. So these are all emission-based nebulas, again, really well suited for their narrowband filters or multi-band pass filters as well. But I've chosen this because at you can obviously shoot any of these individual targets with a deeper, narrower field of view, but I've chose this for 500 millimeters because just shooting that many objects in one frame is a really awesome feeling and makes for a really gorgeous photo. So 500 millimeters, head on over to Auriga. Now star clusters don't get a lot of love, but if you're at 600 millimeters focal length and you're in the Perseus area, why don't you go over and look at the double cluster, NGC 884, the Perseus double cluster. Jai Percy, I think it was also known as. These are two open clusters right next to each other. And at 600 millimeters with a 1.5 times camera, you can get both really well framed in the center. Very gorgeous, very visually striking image, I'm sure. So again, if you're in the area, why don't you, have, why don't you consider giving that one a shot? If you're at 700 to 800 millimeters of focal length, I'm gonna point you over to Leo, to the Leo triplet, in fact. Now. At 700 to 800 millimeters, you can get all three galaxies quite nicely in the frame with a decent star field around them. Now I'm gonna push you to shooting this after the 6th of January though, because the moon is literally right next to Leo and will damage your individual subs. Being broadband targets, you can only use a light pollution filter and you can't really block the moon glow. So leave it until a bit later on in the month if you're gonna be shooting the Leo triplet. From about midnight, it raises above 20 degrees altitude and is available all the way until dawn. So this could be a good thing, so like go shoot the Andromeda galaxy and then move over to the Leo triplet perhaps. Lots of galaxies. If you're running at 800 millimeters as well, then I'm gonna point you over to Ursa Major and we're looking at M81, M82 and the Garland galaxy. So here's another triplet of galaxies you can get in one field of view. M81, M82, Bodes and Cigar Galaxy really well known, but you don't normally see them shot with the Garland Galaxy as well, which is a third galaxy just close by. So 800 millimeters, why don't you consider these ones? Now a few people with really long instruments, one and a half thousand to 2000 millimeters of focal length, for example, I'm gonna be recommending a couple of galaxies for you. The first one, M63, about 1500 millimeters. M63, the Sunflower Galaxy. Now this is a really gorgeous galaxy located in Cannes Venetici, and it's also available from about 11.30 till midnight. And that's when it raises above 20 degrees altitude and it'll be available all night. So if you have a long instrument like that, why don't you consider this galaxy? If you have 2000 millimeters of focal length and you're still at about 1 a.m., then why don't you consider Messier 100, the blow dryer galaxy? Now this is a spiral face on galaxy that's often overlooked and completely 
moved, like pushed aside by the Whirlpool galaxy, that's because the blow dryer galaxy is really quite small. You need a long instrument or a tiny sensor to really be able to capture it. I'd love to do it myself. It's located in Coma Berenices and is available from about 1 a.m., like I said, all the way through until dawn. So if you've got long instruments, there's a couple of galaxies for your gut hunting. Right, for planet hunters out there, I've got a couple of plans for you as well in January. There's Mars and Uranus. Both are viable targets, but I'm assuming most people are going to be shooting Mars because I suspect Uranus needs extremely big instruments and tiny sensors. But either way, they both reach a highest elevation of about 48 degrees altitude by about 7.38 p.m. due south. So if you've got those planetary setups and you're looking for some plans to shoot, consider them to your objective for January. Right, for all you people who love shooting the moon, or if you wanna know when to get the hydrogen alpha filter out or when to just stay inside, here are the lunar phases for January. The 6th of January is last quarter. The 13th of January is new moon. First quarter falls on the 20th of January with the full moon being the 28th of January. Also in January, we have the Quadrantids meteor shower. So this is a meteor shower that resides in Draco and comes out towards the northeast. It's a meteor shower that runs from the 28th of December to the 12th of January, with the peak being around the 4th of January. So probably, hopefully, that's the same day this video comes out. So if you've got some dark skies, or some clear skies, maybe try about catching some meteor showers. And there you go, that's the night sky in January. Now I hope this list has given you some insight or some inspiration of what to shoot this month. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive list at all. These are just a few targets I thought might be interesting for people of varying equipment to go and image. And again, your skies may vary. I can't see Orion because my self view is completely blocked, but you might be all over Orion. So again, this is just a few targets I thought were interesting and I hope it's been useful for you. If you like this kind of format, let me know in the comments down below and I'll carry on doing it. And what are you looking forward to shooting in January? Let me know down below. Hope you have clear skies, everybody. Thanks very much for watching. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.